You the environmentalists. You the activists. You the campaigners. You who have watched, with a growing sense of unease, the ways in which this world has been ravaged in the pursuit of the almighty dollar. You who have watched, with growing concern, the ways that we treat the planet that we are leaving behind for our children, for our grandchildren, and for those generations not yet born. This is a message not of divisiveness, but one of cooperation and unity. This is a message of hope and empowerment, but it requires us to take a look at a hard and uncomfortable truth. Your movement has been usurped by the very same financial interests you thought you were fighting against. You have suspected as much for years. You watched with hope and excitement as your cause, your movement, your message began to spread, as it was taken up by the media and given attention, as conferences were organized into the ideas you have struggled so long and hard to be heard were talked about nationally, then internationally. You watched with growing unease as the message was simplified. First it became a slogan, then it became a brand. Soon it was nothing more than a label, and it became attached to products. The ideas you had once fought for were now being sold back to you for profit. You watched with growing unease as the message became parroted, not argued, more like a fashion rather than something that came from the conviction of understanding. You disagreed when the slogans and then the science was dumbed down when carbon dioxide became the focus and CO2 was taken up as a political cause. Soon it was the only cause. You knew that Al Gore was not a scientist, that his evidence was factually incorrect, that the movement was being taken over by a cause that was not your own, one that relied on beliefs you did not share to propose a solution you did not want. It began to reach a breaking point when you saw that the solution being proposed was not a solution at all when they began to propose new taxes and new markets that would only serve to line their own pockets. You knew something was wrong when you saw them argue for a cap-and-take trade scheme proposed by Ken Lay, when you saw Goldman Sachs position itself to ride the carbon trading bubble, when the whole thrust of the movement became ways to make money, or spend money, or raise money from this panic. Your movement had been hijacked. And when you looked at the Club of Rome's elite member roster, and when you learned about eugenics and the Rockefeller ties to the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, and the practice of crypto eugenics and the rise of the overpopulation fear-mongering and the call by elitist after elitist after elitist to cull the world population. Still, you wanted to believe that there was some basis of truth, something real and valuable in this single-minded obsession of the hijacked environmental movement with man-made global warming. Now, in November 2009, the last traces of doubt have been removed. Last week, an insider leaked internal documents and emails from the Climate Research Unit of East Anglia University and exposed the lies, manipulation, and fraud behind the studies that supposedly show 0.6 degrees Celsius of warming over the last 130 years, and the hockey stick graph that supposedly shows unprecedented warming in our times, and the alarmist warming of impending climate disaster. We now know that they wrote programming notes in their own source code of their own climate models, admitting that results were being manually adjusted. We now know that values were being adjusted to conform to scientists' wishes, not reality. We now know that the peer review process itself was being perverted to exclude those scientists whose work criticized their findings. We now know that these scientists expressed doubts to each other about the reliability of the science that they publicly claimed to be settled. We now know, in short, that they were lying. 
It is unknown as yet what the fallout from all of this will be, but it is evident that the fallout will be substantial. We are at a crossroads of history, and make no mistake, history will be the final judge of our actions. So I leave you today with a simple question. Which side of history do you want to be on?